Hi, my name is Conical Clarnas and you're watching a video measuring in nine positions of gaze, an optiform. And we'll be discussing just that, how to measure uh, a deviation in the nine positions using the synoptiform. So when measuring a deviation, we will use the principles that we learnt in concomitant strabismus last semester. And to measure a deviation, we use simultaneous perception slides and we can measure the deviation subjectively and objectively. Now you will recall you can fix the arms of the uh, synoptophore, so you can assess the patient fixing right and fixing left. So again, as with the prism cover test, where you can assess the patient fixing right, fixing left, as with the Maddox rod, where you can have the rod in front of the right or left eye to have them fixing right, fixing left, you can do the same with the synoptophore. So the arm that you lock or the tube that you lock um, will be the fixing eye and you'll be measuring the deviation of the other eye. Now, because you're going to be doing many positions of gaze, uh, you don't, if you can avoid it, you don't want to be doing um, objective and subjective in every position of gaze. So the first thing you'll do is measure prime position and look at the subjective and objective angle. And if they do match and you have normal retinal correspondence, then it's safe to continue the examination by simply subjectively requesting the patient to put the line in the cage, for example. If, however, you have a patient who's got ARC, you will need to rely on your objective measurements uh, for, the, um, for each position, and you don't need to do the subjective deviation, or you don't need to measure the subjective de uh, deviation nor positions of gaze in that instance. Okay, so last semester we learned about how to assess the patient in prime position. Well, we can actually move the synoptophore into nine positions of gaze or the tubes into various positions. Generally, we'll move them 15 degrees from the primary position. So we can move them 15 degrees, say, into right gaze and then 15 degrees up or down to represent dextro elevation, dextro depression. Okay, let's have a look at the components of the synoptophore that are crucial in assessing a patient uh, using the synoptophore, and then also the slides. So, as I mentioned a moment ago, you'll need your simultaneous perception slides, and you'll find in the clinic that we have a set of slides where there is a line beneath the line. These are actually slides we've personally manipulated, they're not manufactured this way. But the reason we've put that line there is so that the patient can, or we can ask the patient if that line is parallel to the bottom, um, the bottom component or the bottom line of the cage. And we're looking for torsion in this particular instance. Uh, there's a video specifically dedicated to torsion, and we'll talk about what slides have been designed for torsion on the synoptophore. But um, we do utilise uh, these in clinic now. If you chose to personally create um, or manipulate your own slides in clinic, you would need to make sure that that line is perfectly straight, otherwise it will create errors in your measurements. Again, you don't need the line. You could simply ask about the feet of the, the, feet of the line or ask if the line is tilted. But um, through experience, we found that um, adding a line beneath the, the line does assist the patient to determine if there is any tilt. Okay, moving on to the synoptophore, we have the horizontal levers, so this will move the tube horizontally. And so if we move both those tubes to the right, we'll put the patient into right gaze. If we move both those tubes to the left, we'll move the patient into left gaze. We can also move the tubes uh, up or down. So we'll use these particular levers in this instance, and generally we'll move these 15 degrees up or 15 degrees down. Okay, so let's have a look at what it looks like when you've actually moved the tubes. Now, it's difficult to tell in this particular photograph, but let's have a look at the first photograph. This synoptophore is actually moved to the right and up, and you can see that the tubes are up. It's a little bit more difficult to see that this is actually to the right. But if we have a closer look, let's have a look at up um, for the moment. What we can see is that we've placed the tubes at 15 degrees here, and 15 degrees here, and here you can just see more closely that uh, that is indicating that we've moved the patient to 15 degrees up gaze in this particular instance. Okay, for the horizontal, we can see here that both the right and the left levers have moved into 15 degrees, and if you can have a look here, you can just see that I've placed it at 15 degrees here. So um, what we see is that we've moved the tubes to the right 
and up. And so what we'd be assessing is the patient in dextral elevation. In this position, you would then ask the patient, is the line in the cage? And then progress as per normal to putting the line in the cage. As I mentioned earlier, you can do the entire examination subjectively by the patient putting the line in the cage if you've determined that there is normal retinal correspondence. Otherwise, you must perform it objectively because um, ARC will have impact on the size that you find. Just to note that when you're assessing a patient uh, for AV patterns, so you're assessing the patient in primary elevation and depression on the synoptophore, that it is good to have that assessment in 30 degrees. So this is probably one of the few instances that will move the tubes up into 30 degrees and down to 30 degrees. It can become difficult for the patient to look through the tubes and certainly in horizontal gaze, if you try to move the tubes into 30 degrees, um, it's very difficult for the patient to look through the tube. So very, um, <clears throat> you wouldn't generally move the horizontal tubes into 30 degrees. To elaborate further, um, let's have a look at the levers that will be uh, manipulated to put the line in the cage if they're the slides you're using. So the patient will be able to move one of these levers to put the line or move the line horizontally towards the middle of the cage. Of course, you'll be fixing one and the patient will be moving the other. Now for the vertical component, you can move the slide up or down so that the line moves up or down. However, it's important to note that you're the only one who has access to these levers. And these are the levers here that will measure the height of the deviation. So you need to ask the patient if the line is up or down and then move the uh, vertical component of the, um, or the vertical component of the tube. Now, remember that the lever to move the tubes up in towards up gaze is different to the lever that moves the slide up or down. This is the lever that will move the uh, tubes into up gaze or down gaze. And this is the lever that will move the slide up or down. So this is the one you wanna use to measure the vertical deviation. Do not move the, um, the tubes up or down, just move the slide up or down. And finally, you have now the opportunity to measure torsion, and this is the lever here for torsion. And you'll have to ask your patient whether the uh, line is tilted and then tilt him in such a way that he'll then be sitting in alignment with the, with the cage. Okay, let's have a look at an example. Let's say we're using the line and the cage lines. We're going to have to look for three components, the horizontal deviation, vertical deviation, torsion. So we're gonna to have to ask the patient those three um, questions. Now, torsion's only asked if essentially you find some vertical element to the deviation. Now, say the patient um, described that the line was on the cage, that uh, he was down, tilted, and to the right, then we would first ask the patient to move the cage horizontally so that it's in the middle or towards the middle of the cage. The patient would um, place the line in this particular position, but still you need now to correct the vertical component. So the next step would be for you to start moving the vertical lever till the patient says the line is in the center of the cage. And finally, we need to deal with the torsion component. Again, you're the only um, individual who can move or uh, yeah, who can move the torsion lever. So the patient will have to um, indicate to you when that line is parallel to the bottom of the cage. So in this particular instance, we'll keep going till the line is parallel and the line is actually exactly on the bottom of the cage in this particular instance. Okay, if you don't have a line again, just ask about um, are the feet parallel to, to the bottom uh, of the cage or tell me when the line is straight and not tilted. Okay, so upon conclusion of that assessment, you'll need to read the measurements of the horizontal component of the synoptophore, the vertical and the torsion and record all three. Okay, so how do we record the results? Uh, as with the PCT and the Maddox rod, we'll use a grid format. You'll now be able to also record a cyclo uh, deviation if it's present, but in the examples below, we only have a horizontal and a vertical deviation that's been noted. So always record um, which is the fixing eye, fixing right or fixing left, and um, indicate which is right gaze and which is left gaze. But again, if you don't put that or label it, it will be assumed um, that it is 
as you see it in this particular example. Okay, so in summary, ensure that you have a look at all three components or ask about all three components of a potential deviation, horizontal, vertical and torsion. And when you're assessing the patient in each position of gaze, move them 15 degrees horizontally and 15 deg degrees in up or down gaze. Now, the only time we usually move into using 30 degrees is when you're specifically looking for AV patterns, in which instance you will move the tubes 30 degrees up or 30 and 30 degrees down. Okay, that brings us to the conclusion of this video.